Okay, where we're going to start with now is uh, setting up outputs. So we, we've got we've got our our channels and everything defined. Um, now I want to set up some outputs. I've got a matrix here, which is all well and good, um, but let's go and put some some other simple things on. So how about we we do a star or two? Let's let's do a star or two. So. Um, some candy canes, maybe. Keep hey, quick word. Yeah. With the stars, how you keep on trying to drag it to the same size. Is there any way to make them all the same size? Uh, there is once you've done them. So I can select them all, right click on this. Um, oh, I can align, can I make them the same size? Um, Look, I, I definitely can manually. I can come down to size location here and I can manually set the height and the width and force them to be exactly the same. I, I, there's no, I don't think there's any simple right click way of saying make them all the same size. But you know what? Uh, you could ping me an email and I'll add it to my list and see if I can do it. Sounds good to me. <laughs> all right. Okay, so there's, there's a couple of things here. We've got a, a reasonably large matrix. Uh, we've got some stars and we've got some candy canes. So before we start to do the outputs, we have to start thinking about how are we going to configure these or how are we going to wire these all up on my, my controller. And so the way I'm going to do this one is my matrix, I, I'm just going to, it's fairly straightforward. I'm just going to have, uh, I'm going to start on one output. It's uh, it's 2,400 channels, um, which is a little bit more than a, than a single output can deal with. So this one's probably going to go over at least two outputs, um, which is fine. Um, well, in this case, it's actually configured to go over 16. So let, let's change that. Let's, let's make it two outputs. Um, and uh, what's the maximum you can do? Let's do two, two outputs of 600 and let's fold them six times. Okay, so this one's set up to go over two outputs. My stars, I'm actually gonna chain together and uh, my candy canes are gonna be on a separate output. So let's follow my preferred practice. Let's change our start channel here and let's start these on universe one, channel one, which is good. And they are going to finish at channel 3600. So if we come over here, the first thing above 3600 is universe nine. So I'm gonna come back here and my first star, I'm gonna start that at universe nine channel one, because it's nice and neat. Um, and then my candy canes, because my stars are gonna end up at channel 4530. Um, which sits nicely within channel nine. So channel 10 is going to be my candy cane. Sorry, universe 10 is going to be my candy canes. So I'm going to set that up as universe 10 channel one. Always like to start the first model on an output from a controller on channel one. So, so they're all nicely there. Uh, we know they don't overlap. How do we know? Well, we go up here and we run check sequence and not, no overlaps. It's all looking good. Great, so now we need to start describing how are we gonna connect these models up. So let's imagine we're connecting them up on our Falcon controller. Uh, this thing's gonna require two channels, uh, sorry, two outputs, and so we're gonna put it on outputs uh, one and two, or maybe four and five, I don't know, but they have to be sequential in order for the automatic configuration to happen. If you go and, and plug the first string into uh, channel, uh, into string output five and the, and the other one into four. You can set it up that way on the Falcon controller, that's fine, but you're on your own. I require you to configure it so you type the, the lowest um, node number on your matrix should go into a, a given output and then the next string up should go into the next output up and that's the only way I can automatically configure this for you. The way we configure it is we come down here to the controller connection and we come down here and we say, these are WS2811 pixels, they are. 
And uh, I, I don't know, we, they don't have to start at one, we could start them on output four. So on output four of this particular Falcon controller, I'm going to attach these two strings or one string onto output four, and then the, the overflow will go on to output five. My stars here, my stars are going to be attached to WS2811, and let's say we do put this onto output one, and these are all on output one, okay, because they, they're all connected to one another. So they all go onto output one, which is fine. And we'll put, uh, now my, um, actually we have a problem. I'm actually only using a Falcon 4. So uh, this is gonna have to be on output three and four. And then this one here is gonna have to be on output two. Okay, so now we've gone through, we've described each of our models, we've set them up without overlapping channels, and we've told each one of these models which output port on the Falcon board that they are configured to. Now, these things are using universes one through 10. So we need to go in here and update this to put it on the, the right controller. So we'll do a bulk edit again. And this time we're gonna set the IP address to my Falcon controller, which happens to be 127. Um, I'm not worried about the multicast one, That's, that doesn't exist, we're not using that. But we are gonna get our Falcon board, our Falcon Pi Play to send it out. So let's very quickly, uh, let's go and update our Falcon Pi Player. And we'll just upload that controller configuration because I'm going to want the data to be sent from the Falcon Pi player. And if we switch back to our Falcon Pi player and we quickly refresh this, there's all the data and all of this stuff's being sent out to my Falcon board, which is here on 192.168.0.127. Now, on this screen here, we need to set up all of those universes because uh, the Falcon uh, board is going to need to um, read all of that data and know what to receive. And at the moment, it's, it's just got a single universe defined with one channel, which is obviously not right. So the way we do this is we come over to our setup screen again, and this time we right click on it and we do an upload to controller. It's an input definition. The Falcon board's gonna be receiving this data. And so we take the input definition, we go to the Falcon board, and we click on it, it warns us that it's gonna upload it and override everything. We're pretty happy about that and it's done. So now if we come back here and we refresh it, you can see that universes one to 10, all 510 in size have been uploaded onto the Falcon controller, ready to be received from my Falcon Pi player. Now, if I'd uploaded, um, if I'd uploaded something that wasn't at universe one or channel one, uh, these start channels would be matching exactly what Xlight says the absolute channel number is. Again, making it very easy to debug what's going on and checking that numbers match when you expect them to match. So that's the input side of it. Now my Falcon board knows what to listen for. Now we need to set up the string ports which is basically saying which data should be sent out to which one of these things. Um, so now we have to go back to um, X lights. All right, where we've got all of these things all nicely set up. So we go back to our setup tab. And again, we right click, we can pick any one of these things because it knows to go and find all the others. And we're gonna do an upload to controller. This time it's an output and the only outputs we support are the Falcon. We click on Falcon, we say yes, and it's done. And now when we come back here and refresh this, our string ports are here. Not only that, it brings in the description of the model that was attached to it. So it looks at the first model that was attached to that output and brings its description in. 
helps you understand what's there. It chooses the correct start channel. So it says here, my first star is starting on 4081. And if I come over here and I find my first star, it's on channel 4081. So that all looks good. My candy canes are on 4591. Come over here, candy canes. Candy canes are on 4591. And you can see my matrix, it's spread it across both. And it knew that there were only 600 pixels on each because we said in our matrix definition that there were 600 nodes and there were two strings. And so it's used up two of the outputs and it's put the first lot there and the second lot there and calculated all of the channels and everything else. Now, this works great when you follow these sorts of rules. If you're using things like virtual strings and everything else, then obviously Xlights does not have enough information to know how to configure things. What Xlights does, however, know is not to override anything there. So if previously I'd come into here and I'd said this is actually a GRB string of lights and I save it and then I come back to Xlights and I re-upload my configuration. Uh, where are we? Upload to controller output Falcon. Yes. And then when I come over here and refresh this, it doesn't override the color order because we know that I, I don't have any information about what I should upload. So I leave it as whatever it was and assuming that all you did was move the models around, et cetera. And so you needed some slightly different channels. It's probably a good thing that this color order hasn't changed on you. Neither will the brightness. Um, if you do any funky stuff with directions and null channel, null pixels and all of that sort of stuff, none of that's going to change. Um, but clearly it, it's a bit more problematic. There's more risk of it not uploading it exactly the way you want it, the more you do strange things in your Falcon controller. But if you keep it simple and start, um, you know, generally speaking, run either one model per output or multiple models per output chain together or where you need to span a model across multiple outputs, you always do them in sequential order. So you go one output up, you're fine. If you want to span controllers, if you want to uh, connect to different string ports in random orders, if you want to have uh, a model hanging off the back of another model and then spilling over into another string port, all of that sort of stuff, you know, that's weird shit. You're out there, it's fine. You can still do that, but you're going to have to manually configure it. You won't be able to take advantage of the automatic upload. Obviously, the, the advantage of the automatic upload is that it's incredibly probable that everything here is set up exactly correctly. And when you turn it on and try to send the data, everything will work as expected. So, any questions? Does that all make sense? Now, the thing that I haven't built yet is, is I haven't actually built the, the Falcon Pi player output um, definition, only the input definition for bridge mode. Um, I do need to build uh, that here for output as well, but that will come in time. So it's pretty simple to do. Follow the simple rules, keep your configuration nice and simple, and then you can just upload things. So when you start to juggle with your channels and insert new models, throw an extra star on the end of, your, uh, of something and everything starts to move around, you don't have to now go and manually reconfigure all of your controllers. You can just upload it. Did I miss any questions? Does anyone speak up? What's the downside to running two different elements on one output? Um, there's no downside. Um, I, I run nine snowflakes on one output. I run five arches on one output. There's no downside to it at all. Um, in the same universe, again, so look, the Falcon controllers and, um, and you know, some of the more advanced controllers, to be honest, the universe thing is just a way of grouping your pixels up. Um, they don't care whereabouts from those pix that pixel data the data comes from. 
um, so you don't have to do anything fancy. My practice of using uh, universe start channel one for the first model on an output is a practice that makes things extremely simple to understand. Um, it's not mandatory, x lights doesn't force it and Falcon doesn't force it, but as you go into those sorts of configurations, it gets harder to debug. It gets more complicated because you're always worrying about, well, what happens if I need to add something um, and so forth. It gets very hard. If a pixel dies and everything after that pixel doesn't work, yeah, sure. But you know what? I, I've been running in pixels a few years now and I've never had something go out like that. I've had individual pixels lose colors and things like that, but it's pretty rare that you lose data. And if you're using 2.8.11, sorry, 2.8.13s and the like, even a, a dead pixel won't stop you. You'd need to lose two in a row in order for it to actually stop working. Any other questions? Kimbo's copy and paste question. Oh, could I have copied and pasted? I guess I could have done. All good? Last call? Okay.